Thank you, Michel, for uh, this very nice introduction. And um, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today and see as many of you here uh, with us for uh, this uh, Open Information Day. And let's see. Yeah. So um, uh, I will start by uh, giving our perspective on uh, the fourth call for proposals based uh, on the working document uh, that most probably you have already seen. Uh, and uh, from our perspective, uh, what are the very exciting topics that have been included uh, in this forks call um, as an encouragement, if you wish, uh, to apply as uh, for this particular project uh, and uh, as a complementarity to what we are doing in the framework program. So before launching uh, in uh, the topics themselves, uh, I would like to remind everyone uh, that uh, we did go through a revision of the IMI scientific uh, research agenda um, because the initial three calls of IMI um, have been drafted based on the original uh, scientific research agenda. Nevertheless, science has evolved since 2008. It evolves every day. Um, and thus, these new elements had to be brought in uh, the calls of, of IMI. Also, the pharmaceutical industry has changed, uh, and uh, we don't have to remind anyone that this is a partnership. It is a public-private partnership, uh, and we do have uh, to respond to the needs of the pharmaceutical industry. So the process for revision uh, led by the IMI Scientific Committee, uh, and some of the members are here. Thank you very much for your very hard work. Uh, with input from FPA, uh, from the state's representative group, and from independent uh, experts uh, have resulted uh, in this revised scientific uh, research agenda uh, to be adopted shortly. So uh, it builds uh, on the four pillars of the uh, original uh, uh, scientific research agenda, the knowledge management, efficacy, safety, and education and training, uh, but also encompasses the different aspects uh, that have changed uh, in the last few years. Uh, obviously, uh, I would like to emphasize here the bigger role uh, of the patients uh, in um, the, the call topics. So, without further ado, let's see uh, what are the eight new research areas which are proposed to be addressed. Uh, we are starting with pharmacogenomics, genetics and taxonomy of human disease, rare diseases and stratified therapies, systems approaches uh, in drug research. Um, I, I like very much this one, beyond high throughput screening. Obviously, we do have a lot of technological progress, uh, but we do have to capitalize on it uh, and use the results uh, of what is coming from this project, uh, in fact, uh, to look at pharmacological interactions at the molecular level. The active pharmaceutical ingredients development, uh, the famous drug compound development, uh, obviously, it's very easy to give IV to everyone, but uh, I'm not sure uh, how willing uh, each and every one of us uh, would be if therapies uh, would be only in that form. The advanced formulation um, and um, the stem cells for drug development and toxicity screening and integration of imaging techniques into drug research. So the four call topics are bridging the previous scientific research agenda with a revised scientific research agenda. Uh, and more is to come uh, in the next call. The fourth call, uh, we are seeing seven topics in three pillars. And very briefly, um, they, are, they can be split uh, into three large uh, uh, categories or pillars, as I was mentioning. Uh, the first one, EU Medical Information System, um, EMIF and ETRICS, 
the chemistry manufacturing and control uh, with delivery and targeting mechanisms for biological macromolecules, the predictive biopharmaceutical tools for all our uh, drug delivery, uh, and sustainable chemistry. Uh, finally, the third pillar, uh, technology and molecular disease understanding uh, with a topic related to stem cells um, for drug discovery and safety assessment, uh, and then understanding and optimizing binding kinetics uh, in drug uh, discovery. What are the key aspects of the fourth call? These are indeed the first think big topics. Uh, the Commission welcomes very much uh, the launch of IMIF, uh, 24 million from both FPA and the public side, uh, and the topic surrounding the stem cells, 26 million from both uh, FPA and the public side. Uh, and we are looking forward to the next calls uh, for topics that are at least as large uh, as these ones. In addition, uh, I would like to point out these new research areas in pharmaceutical chemistry, oral drug delivery, binding kinetics, uh, and optimizing delivery of biological macromolecules. Finally, um, I would like also to emphasize that the topic will continue to bring together data, resources, and expertise from the public and private sectors to improve the pharmaceutical research. So uh, I think that this key aspect uh, has been there for all the calls uh, of IMI. It's going to be there for the future calls. Um, and uh, that's why I'm very happy that so many of you are here today uh, to get this information um, and go back to your organization and mobilize those that are interested in applying uh, to these particular topics. So, uh, going very briefly uh, through each and every one of the areas that we've discussed, um, uh, why we are uh, so excited about them. Uh, I'll start with the uh, IMIF patient level data. Um, has the potential, in fact, to significantly advance medical and pharmaceutical research. Uh, a particular need for such information uh, are for pediatric populations. Its potential, truth being said, has not been really uh, realized um, in uh, topics and in projects funded uh, under the framework program because of the hurdles. So we very much welcome uh, this particular approach. So by submitting a proposal to these topics, researchers can contribute to fulfilling this vision uh, of creating a lasting and comprehensive framework to use patient level data. Um, broad network, a, a new governance models, both for ethics and for privacy, uh, and uh, obviously the data management and analysis. We have three different topics here, the information framework, uh, the metabolic complications of uh, obesity in adults and children, uh, and finally the protective uh, markers and precipitating markers for the development uh, of Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. Uh, 